Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. I'm Dr. Vanessa, and this little slice of my YouTube channel I'm referring to as Kids Corner. In today's video, we are going to talk about blood. What is your blood made of? And what do those different components of your blood do? Stay tuned, and not only will you find out what blood is made of and the different cells that are there, but at the end, we're gonna do a fun demonstration so that you can visualize what this all looks like. Hope you enjoy it. about blood. Did you know that blood is the only fluid connective tissue in the body? Pretty cool. All our other tissues are solid material. Blood is a fluid. Blood gets pumped by the heart all over the body to do some very specific things. One of them is to carry oxygen all over the body because the cells need oxygen. Another is to transfer nutrients all over the body because the cells also need nutrients to survive as well. The blood also transports wastes out of the body. But what is blood made of? Blood is actually made of two things. Those two things are referred to as plasma and formed elements. Plasma makes up about 55% of the blood and the other 45% are those formed elements. But what are formed elements? That's kind of a weird word and you may not know what that means. Formed elements means anything that is formed. So these actually include three different types of cells. Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, which I don't have a model of. Um, so red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Now red blood cells make up the most part of blood. So red blood cells actually make up about 86.6% of Why, what do they do? Red blood cells are really important because those are the ones that are going to carry oxygen all over the body. They actually bind to oxygen and then deliver it to the different cells and tissues that need that oxygen. So we need a lot of red blood cells. What about white blood cells? There are actually five different types of white blood cells. We're not going to talk about each one individually. They all have very special jobs. Um, but as a whole, white blood cells are part of your immune system. So when you get sick, an infection, or even something like a scrape that may get infected, your body is sprung into action to fight those off. And how does it do that? It does that because of these white blood cells. And since they're in your blood, going all over your body, they're always there and always available. So white blood cells are part of the immune system and they help to fight off infection. White blood cells uh, make up about 3% um, of the formed elements, so there's not very many of them, but they do a mighty job in helping to fight off um, disease. And finally, the last type of cell that you have in your blood are called platelets. And platelets make up about 10% of those formed elements. Platelets are really tiny, tiny cells. They actually are a, were a very large cell. And that very, very large cell in its development exploded. And then you have all these tiny little platelets. And these tiny little platelets have a lot of vesicles in them. And the purpose of these platelets is to make blood clots. So when you get a cut, and that cut bleeds, eventually you get a thickened part of that blood that's referred to as a blood clot. That's because your platelets were activated. So your platelets are always in your blood. When an injury occurs, they get activated, they start to stick to one another, and they fill up the little hole or gap that is there, and they form a blood clot. So all three of these are really important um, parts of the blood. So your blood not only uh, brings oxygen and nutrients around the body because of those red blood cells um, carrying oxygen. Your blood also helps fight off disease with those white blood cells. 
And then those platelets are really important in helping to make blood clots and make sure that you don't lose all your blood if you were to get an injury. So really important parts of the blood. The plasma in the blood holds a lot of proteins in there. There's also things called antibodies that are part of the immune system as well. And later on, we'll talk more about those in a different video. Um, but the plasma is the liquid portion of that blood and all these cells basically float um, in that liquid portion and they travel all over the body making sure that you stay healthy. Now, now that you know a little bit about these blood cells, let's take a look at a little demonstration that you can do to visually see um, what your blood would look like. All right, so we are going to do a quick demonstration to show you visually what blood would look like um, and how the number of cells differ, okay? So here's the few things you're going to need. You're going to need light corn syrup, and I'll put these in the description as well. Red Hots, which are kind of hard to find. You can substitute uh, anything that may look similar. Lima beans. And then I'm using rice grains. You could also do um, like white sprinkles would work for that as well. Okay, so let's talk about what each of these, of these are going to represent. So the Red Hots are going to represent the red blood cells because red blood cells are actually red. And the reason that red blood cells are red is because of a protein in those red blood cells that is called hemoglobin. And hemoglobin actually binds to oxygen and that's how the red blood cells can carry that oxygen around because of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is also a pigment and it gives blood its red color. So if you've ever heard that blood can be blue, that's not true, okay? Blood is only red. Blood is either a darker red or a lighter red depending on how much oxygen the blood has in it, but it's always red because of hemoglobin. So hemoglobin makes those um, red blood cells red. So we are going to use the red hots for those red blood cells. White blood cells look a little bit different than red blood cells. Another fun fact about a red blood cell is that red blood cells don't have a nucleus in them. And that's why whenever you see them, they always have that concave shape, that biconcave shape. And that's because um, they don't have a nucleus in them. But white blood cells do. And we're going to just use the lima beans um, to represent our white blood cells. So white blood cells would have a nucleus whenever you see them. They have a purple part inside of them. Some, some are different than others. That's how you can tell them apart. But white blood cells are actually bigger than red blood cells. So the lima bean is bigger than the red hot. And so that's why we're going to use the lima bean to represent the white blood cell um, because white blood cells are actually bigger than red blood cells. And then the last one that we're going to use is our little grain of rice. And this is going to represent, oop, and I lost that one. Very good. That's going to represent platelets um, because platelets are just pieces of a cell that exploded and they have just a lot of vesicles in them so that they can be activated and form blood clots if needed. So they're very small. I'm not really sure what color they are. So you can use um, white sprinkles. You could even use red sprinkles. We're going to use a grain of rice to, um, to show that. Okay. Okay. So the other thing that you're going to need for this experiment is something to put it in. I'm going to use a conical tube, a 50 mil conical tube for mine. You can use an empty water bottle, an empty Gatorade bottle, um, whatever you would like. The only thing that's going to differ from what I'm doing is this is pretty small scale. So if you use something bigger, you're just going to have to scale up on that, okay? So remember the two main components of blood are plasma, and formed elements. And plasma makes up about 55% of the blood while the formed elements make up 45%. So we have our corn syrup here. And plasma is a watery, yellowish looking substance. As I mentioned before, it's a liquid and it has a, um, a bunch of different proteins in there that help the body do different things. And so corn syrup is a really good um, model for that because it looks similar to the watery substance of the blood. So this is going to represent our plasma and I'm going to fill this up to 
about 55% um, in here because remember it makes up 55% of, of our blood. You may want to do this in a kitchen or a table because it could get a little messy. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up my, um, the rest with my formed elements. So remember our formed elements are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And the formed elements makes up the other 45%, okay? So the formed elements are gonna make up the other 45%. And red blood cells make up the most because they make up about 86.6%, so almost 87% of the formed elements, okay? So they are the most in here. So I'm gonna fill this with my, my red hots that are going to signify my red blood cells almost the whole way. All right, and then that probably looks about good because we want to be able to fit in our white blood cells. White blood cells make up only 3%, so really small, so probably only one would go in here. Um, I'll put two for fun, but white blood cells are really hard to find um, in the blood. And I'm actually gonna pop up a um, picture underneath the microscope right now. You can take a look at that. And that picture shows you what blood looks like under the microscope. So what you'll notice is that the red blood cells make up most of the um, blood. All those reds are the red blood cells where the white blood cells are pretty hard to find and they don't make up a lot of that blood. Okay, so in a drop of blood, there's gonna be a lot more red blood cells than white blood cells. And then there's going to be more platelets than white blood cells, but not as many platelets as red blood cells. So here's my little rice pieces, and we're gonna fill this. Remember, these are about 10% of the formed elements. Into there to make up about 10%. I think that's probably pretty good. And now, probably have a little bit more space for a couple more red blood cells. We wanna be able to Mix this. Okay, so now we're going to cap that up. If you did it in a water bottle, you're going to have to put uh, a little bit more. And then we're just going to get them to all mix together. And we'll let that sit upside down so that it can. Um, there we go. There we go. Get them all to mix together. And then once we can get that, that's the bubble I was trying to get in there. Probably filled this up a little too much. We can get them to swirl in here. All right, so what you'll notice when you mix yours up, okay, is you'll start to see everything mixing in there. And you'll see um, the white blood cell there's just a few in there, right? So the most of what you're going to see in blood, like that picture I just showed you, is going to be the red blood cells. And then um, the white blood cells are gonna be really few. And then you would see the platelets. And we can keep putting this up and down to um, you know, inverting it, putting it correctly, so that we can get them to mix together more. I also have um, a little dish. So I thought that would be cute to put that in too. Also, and probably really super messy. So I left some red blood cells out, but you can kind of see the idea there. This looks really cool. So, okay. What you'll notice is that there's red blood cells and dripping your platelets and your white blood cells. So that's a cool little demonstration um, to do. If you do it in a bigger container, then you have more space. I probably should have left out a few of those uh, red hots. Um, but hopefully that gives you a nice idea and you can do a quick demonstration as to what um, the blood cells look like. So try this at home. Um, try not to make as much of a mess as I did. And then try to see if you can remember what each of the blood cells do. What do the red blood cells do? 
What do the white blood cells do? And what do those platelets do? I hope that you all enjoyed my video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Put them down in the comments. Um, and uh, if you want to see a specific video on something, let me know that too. Write that down in the comments. If you like this video, uh, please like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel so that you can continue to get notifications. Turn that notification bell on so that you can get notifications of when I put out new videos. I plan to put out new Kids Corner videos um, every other Friday. So please stay tuned and I look forward to teaching you more all about your body and how it works.